In this video, I'm going to talk about getting to know your camera. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood, and welcome to this video. Now, after the roller coaster of emotions in the last week or two regarding my daughter, who is actually getting better, and thank you for all your well wishes and messages, it is much appreciated. And then having an ESR gifted to me, I want to talk about getting to know your camera. Morning. No, not like that. You sick. What I'm talking about is when you first get a camera and you get out of the box, you have to set it up. Everybody does this. You set it to the preferences you prefer, such as I prefer NTSC on my video side of things because I like shooting in 24p. Other people use PAL. Yeah, I like full manual for my macro, but some people like to put it into aperture priority and all that. But what a lot of people don't do is they get to know their camera. And by that, I mean your chosen camera and lens combination. Now, I do get asked a lot, what settings do I need for such and such? And the answer is, I don't know because your conditions are different, your camera is different, and your lens is different. So what I'm going to do in this video is take you through how I'm going to get to know this EOS R before we do any type of photography with it. So I have my new ESR set up with the Canon 100mm macro lens with the control ring adapter and what I'm going to do is set up a scene, okay? So I've got my Millennium Falcon just here and set him up. And what this is, is about, um, in videos when I've got the 650D, I say it to you, there's no way I'll take this camera up with 800 ISO because I know it'll get noisy. I know that this lens gets soft after F10 on that camera. With the HD that's filming now, I know that I can take that ISO up to 3200 and still get a recoverable image that's in my terms of acceptable quality. Yours might be different. Some people like noise, other people don't. It's subjective, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through a set of procedures I do whenever I get a new lens. But this time, we also have a new camera. It's basically the same procedure, so I'm just setting up a, a background here using one of my backgrounds. I've already had a little play with the SR, beautiful camera, I really, really like it. Okay, and what I want to do now is to find out the characteristics between the ESR and my 100mm macro lens, and that's what we are going to do. So I'm just going to frame up this scene so that we've got some nice detail in the center of the image. I've turned off the autofocus and the stabilizer. We are on a tripod. Okay, so I'm going to choose an area of the Millennium Falcon is a, that is of interest and we're going to focus in on the cockpit. So now I'm going to go back to full manual mode okay and I am at f 2.8. What we're going to do is go through the f-stop first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ISO to 100 and I want to keep it there. I'm going to set my timer to a two second timer and I'm just going to take a series of pictures now. And after each picture, I'm going to increase my f-stop. As you can see there, I use the control ring to increase my f-stop. And the reason I'm doing this is we want to know with this lens combination and camera what the sharpest f-stops are. We want to know when diffraction starts to, um, to rear its ugly head. As we know, on the 650D after F10, diffraction starts to set in on that camera. But of course, we've got a newer camera. Not only is it full frame, but it's also got a newer processor in it. And that's something a lot of people don't realise. Not just the hardware that makes these cameras good, it's the software. That's why your phone is so good at photography. It's because of the software. And the sooner these camera companies realize it's the software that makes these cameras good, the better. And I'm going to continue this all the way through the f-stop sequence, which is f32, I believe, on this lens. Once I've done that, I'm going to come back, set my f-stop to around f4, 4.5, 5.6 doesn't really matter but the important part is we are then going to increase our ISO okay and we'll go through the whole range of the ISOs 
Once I've done that, I'm then going to turn on in-camera noise reduction and run through the whole sequence again for the ISO. Once you've got all the pictures, we're going to go over to the computer and we're going to examine them. It's at this part of the video that I messed up. Of course, in-camera noise reduction doesn't affect raw files. I got confused between that and the long exposure noise reduction, which does affect raw files. But nevertheless, my statement still stands that if you get a new lens or a new camera, go through all these settings to get familiar with your camera so you know what it can do. Now also what I didn't mention in the video is I also do this for the video side of stuff. The 4K, HD, different lenses, different ISOs, and also I test out the different codecs to see which ones are best for my use. So now I've explained that and as to why the video has been re-uploaded because I made a technical mistake and I will apologise for that. I needed to delete the old video because it just was wrong. But now back to the video and let's have a look at those ISO levels. Okay, so here we are on the desktop now. And we're going to go through these images now and find out what the best type of settings are going to be for our macro photography. So first of all, I'm going to click on the f-stop folder. Okay, let's come into the develop module so we can have a look at these. 2.8 ISO 100. We are very sharp. I mean, you know, you're not going to really notice much if you're posting it to social media or anything like that. But if you want to print out big, you might notice a slight difference. When we start stopping up, Two, three, two, three, five, four. Okay, so if we look here, that's two, eight, and four. So there's a slight increase in sharpness. And as we go up, you can see here now, we are at 5.6, we're getting sharper. 6.3. 7.1 is very sharp. It's similar to what we're seeing with the 650 when it comes to wide apertures. We're slightly more sharper at f4, running up to, I would say, around f10. Have a look here. That's right, that, that is where we was at with the 650D. After f10, it started to have uh, diffraction coming now. Have a look here. Still okay. That's F14. F16. Still good. And 17. Let's have a look at that. You can see, you can see there, if you look at these little points here. Uh, we're starting to get a little bit of diffraction that's coming in, but that's nothing we can't deal with. F18, getting diffraction coming in now, but still, you can still get away with that image. So this one will be F20. You can see there, now if you're keeping on these little specks of dust, I'm going to go back to number 7, actually go back to number 9. Can you see how these specks of dust are much sharper than they are on this image here. So I would say we can get away with up to F16 quite easily. After F16, after F16 on the EOS site, it starts to get a little bit soft, but nothing you can't fix. Nothing you can't get away with. In fact, you could probably still get away with F22 a little bit. But after that, you start getting diffraction. Now that doesn't mean you can't use F22 or above. It just means that if you want the sharpest image, of your insect you want to stick between f4 and f16 now again on the 650d that was between f4 and f10 that's my opinion because i do have a high stand when it comes to sharpness okay so with the new esr i can get away up to f16 on that so now we know that we want to know what iso can we get away with now so first of all we're going to look at iso with no in-camera noise reduction Okay, let's come in. And what I look at on this is the background, the out-of-focus areas, okay? Right, so that's ISO 50, so it is a lower 50, like I suspected. Okay, there's 100. 
0.25. What I'm going to do, just to keep the, uh, the time of this video short, I'm just going to flicker through these until I get to a point where I don't like the noise. So we're starting to get a little bit noisy at 3200. At this point is where I will come in here now to the detail and increase our noise reduction. Okay, and you can see there, you can easily get away with 3200. Let's have a look at, uh, let's go to 6400. Okay, here's 6400. Okay, you can see how noisy that is when we zoom in. Let's bring the noise reduction up. And when we zoom out, you can see there, we can get away with 6400. Let's carry on going up. So let's have a look at 8000. This is with the noise reduction on 50. And I would say that around 8,000 is the most I would go up to. Let's have a look at 10,000, shall we? So you can see, this is at the point where the image starts falling apart. So let me show you the one before. If you look at the one before, we have a nice, clean noise pattern when we introduce a noise reduction of 50 on the luminance. We've still got noise reduction of noise, and the noise pattern is a noise pattern. Okay, when we go to the next file, which is ISO of 10,000, you see we're starting to get these imperfections. The noise isn't clean. And I don't think increasing this anymore. There we go. Can you see these patterns? That's what we don't want. So for in-camera noise reduction off, ISO 8,000 is the most I would go to on this new EOS R, which is a massive upgrade from the 650 to this. 650D, in my opinion, was ISO 800. I would push it to 1600 if it was the only way to get the image, then that's what I would do. So this is going to be a very nice upgrade. It means we don't have to depend as much on flash and we can start using more natural light. So this is going to be very, very interesting to get outside with this EOS R and see what we can do. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to be using 10,000 on everything. But if I'm in a situation where the sun's going down, I don't have a flash, okay? I know that I can get away with F16, ISO 10,000, and I can still get a printable image from that. Now that's not to say you can't go higher. If you can only get the shot by using an ISO of say 12,800, then go ahead and use that setting because it's the only way you can get it. Like I said, by, by getting to know your camera, I now know that with the ESR in my hand, I can go to 10,000 and I can go to around F20 f22 and still get a good sharp recoverable image so now i know the iso ranges that the camera is capable of that i can recover in lightroom and get away with i now know the f-stops that i can use with my 100 millimeter macro lens it's time to do a desktop macro shoot but you're gonna have to wait for the next video for that one so i want to thank you for getting to the end of this one go out Get to know your camera and lens combination that you prefer to take out in the field with so you know exactly what settings you need and can get away with. I'll see you on the next video. With you in a minute, I forgot my bloody tripod plate. I'm now going to do a photo shoot with one of my jumping spiders, but... So now I know what my cam... <laughs> Image quality and... But that lens is going back, so the next video will that. It's time to put this camera to a, a nice... Ah. Come on! Oh, God, okay. Morning.